Uh, thank you uh, very much. Um, yeah, I, get, I guess the title is about uh, the accord and capability and capacity of the industry and um, strategic asset management. Uh, but really, I guess what I want to talk to you all about is, uh, is about people. And I will talk about those other things, but in the context of our people. And when I say our people, I'm, I'm not just talking about contractors. I'm talking about everyone in the construction sector. So that, that, includes, um, that includes clients and asset owners and, and lawyers and, and bankers and uh, designers and engineers. And of course, it includes contractors, subcontractors and maintenance crews and, and many, many more. Because you know, at the end of the day, quality infrastructure comes from having a team of people come together to build or maintain uh, a piece of infrastructure, and you know, we, we're pretty tough on ourselves sometimes. You know, and what I'd say is, we do know when we get it right, and because we actually celebrate uh, our projects, we we enter them into awards. And in actual fact, we win, uh, win awards locally, uh, nationally, internationally for the infrastructure that we've built. Um, and you know, it's about uh, when people come together and they have that common vision, and you know, Paul mentioned that, it's really important to have that vision. What are we trying to create? What do we want to be? What do we want from that infrastructure? When we get alignment around that, um, we can actually do really great things. So, you know, what, I, what I'd say is about looking ahead is that we need, to, um, we need to learn from our successes. We need to build on those successes because we actually, as an industry, I believe we know how to do it. Uh, there's a lot of things actually get in the way uh, of us doing it. But... You know, a couple of things that I've mentioned to you, when, uh, when people talk to me about great projects, there are two things that I see that are in common uh, most of the time, and that is the culture from day one and the people. And, you know, I, I think uh, we talk about culture quite a lot and the need for cultural change across the industry, but the reality is our companies all of the companies, whether you're engineers or, or contractors or designers or, or clients, we all have a culture now. In fact, uh, the, the culture uh, in our projects have their own culture uh, as well. So reality is it's driven by the people. It's driven by the environment we put them in and the people themselves. So um, I guess that's where the accord comes in. And you know what I'd say is um, the the accord has a lot to offer because it is a catalyst for change and about us doing uh, doing things differently. But you know, well, again, let's learn from from uh, what we do well. We need to support that accord and just uh, understand that the changes we're looking for are going to be driven by people, and that's our people. And so. Uh, the people in your businesses are going to drive that change. So what we need to do is actually create an environment where people understand what we're trying to achieve with the Accord, and I think we're a long way from that at the moment. We need to create an environment where we, people respect each other and value each other's input, and we don't always have that now. Um, so that is definitely changing the, the model. The pace of change is slow, but we need to keep an eye on the prize. And the, the, the prize is that we have a healthy industry. We have a healthy infrastructure industry and construction industry. And that looks after people and consistently delivers infrastructure that we can all be proud of. Um, it's when those teams come together that we achieve the best results. And, and I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about the value of those projects. The value of the project is not the cost, and I think we often get confused about that point. You know, the value is what is it providing to our community uh, for, for the future. So, 
you know, to deliver on, on the promise, we need to ensure that, that the, those accord messages are understood by everyone in our organisations and our, down through our, our supply chains. And we need to create that environment that recognises, rewards and supports the change that uh, we want to see made. You know, being from a contractor's organisation, and uh, I guess with the announced, recent announcements, uh, a lot of people are asking me again, have we got the capability and capacity to deliver on our future infrastructure needs? You know, that's a big question, and I think most of the people in the room here know what the answer is, and that is, I don't know, and I don't think you know either, because the key thing is, we don't know, actually, we, there's no plan about what our future infrastructure needs are that we've all agreed on. Therefore, how can we have capability and capacity to deliver on it, right? Um, so it's not that people are doing nothing. Obviously, everyone's building capability and capacity, and we are anticipating more work coming on, but where that work is going to take us for the future. And, you know, that's where the Commission, we've really supported the, uh, the establishment of the Commission and the work that it's doing is really important for all of us in terms of, OK, we can build the capacity and capability, but tell us what you want, because if you want it tomorrow, it may not be here. And the other thing is we need a, a better planned system, you know, so we have Waterview Tunnel, this is a classic example, you know, where we had first big tunnelling job in New Zealand for a long time, right? Uh, Waterview finishes, two years we've got no tunnelling, now we're doing two major tunnelling jobs in Auckland at the same time. Does that make a lot of sense in terms of use of our resources? Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, but, you know, better planning can actually fill those gaps and smooth, uh, smooth the way. Um, you know, we represent uh, 400 contractors, and um, they, th those contractors, uh, they, they really vary in terms of uh, their size and what they can um, deliver. But we all know that there's a massive infrastructure deficit. Uh, there's the previous, it's been discussed today, previous underinvestment, population growth. Public uh, expectations are growing. We need more resilient infrastructure, impacts of climate change. It's all creating a bit of a perfect storm. While we've got a clear need for better infrastructure, uh, we still see people sweating assets. We still see asset owners who actually don't understand how resilient uh, their infrastructure is or what the condition of their infrastructure even is. We see massively underspent capital budgets, uh, particularly across local authorities. We see projects rushed to market with incomplete designs, and we see a lack of funding mechanisms to renew and upgrade our water infrastructure. So the recent government announcements around infrastructure are really welcome. They've created a bit of certainty and more clarity. But I'd have to say the last two years in the contractor's world has been uh, pretty challenging. And it's reinforced the fact that policies and uh, commitments can change very quickly. Uh, we know uh, there are still contractors in the South Island who are looking at reducing their capability because uh, the, of the lack of work uh, down there. Um, people who own and run construction businesses and their employees have, um, have seen that actually there's a lot of uncertainty that they face and they need to be a little cautious, even when we have big announcements of $11 billion. When is it going to occur is the question that uh, they mainly ask. So looking ahead, we, need to, we definitely need to attract more people to our industry and we need to encourage people to invest in new businesses that are going to grow. Uh, but right now, there's a lack of continuity of work, there are high risks and company failures, there are increased bundling of contracts, there are frequent, uh, I would say, mistreatment of some of our contractors, they're treated as sort of disposable, and that is stifling development of SMEs. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd hesitate there to say, 
you know, a lot of those factors are also impacting on our large contractors as well. Um, but, you know, we've, uh, there's, in terms of, you know, where we go forward, we need to uh, give people a better place to work and look after our current employees. Uh, we need to encourage them to stay and be the biggest advert for uh, other people joining the industry. And that's not just about remuneration, although that is important. It's about health and safety and wellness, family-friendly hours, better training and development and opportunities to grow and lead and be part of those amazing projects. Uh, younger people are looking for different things than uh, just money, and we need to, to realise that. You know, at the construction end, end of the business, we're just scratching the surface in terms of employing women, so that's one area where we, we really need to make gains. So, look, looking ahead, we need clarity uh, we need to clearly communicate and demonstrate to our people what su success looks like and what we're trying to create with the Accord, how that looks and how it feels. Um, you know, there's a massive opportunity with the Accord and we can't afford to miss it. And we need to look after, develop and encourage our people and also our SMEs. And if we do that, I think we'll have a healthier industry that's able to bring great teams together and build the infrastructure we need uh, for the future. Thank you very much.